this week's movie Who Am I? After making my debut just one year earlier, I returned to the silver screen from a spiritual quest to investigate the disappearance of a sacred animal in Africa. Stay tuned to find out. You're listening to the Banana Reel Movie Podcast, episode 58. Warning, this show contains spoilers and coarse language, so you've been forewarned. With the Theatre Gorillas, my name is Carlos. I'm Heath. And I'm Dan. And each and every fortnight we get together and we look at some movies. And this week, what are we looking at, guys? Lights Out. Lights Out. Yes. Yes. Looking at the movie Lights Out, which... Uh, who, who directed Thanks for one? repeating that. <laughs> yes. uh, just in case <laughs> you missed it the first time. Wait, just in case you didn't hear it. And it's also, uh, you can find it on the Gmail. Yes, yeah, yeah, on the Gmail. <laughs> nice. So in case you didn't know, we get together every two weeks. And, <laughs> <laughs> and this week, we're, we're, we're hey, uh, with the same grill. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right, this is off to a really running good start. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mom? Hey, Martin, what's up? Did we wake you? What? The movie was directed by a guy called David F. Sandberg. David F. Sandberg. Yeah, which, from uh, my knowledge, uh, it, the little research I did, little has research not done did. much. Sorry, I'm just still repeating. No, things. well, it was it was based on a short movie, a, a short that he did. Yes, he was the director of the short, so yep. presumably they the the producers saw that and they were like, "Hey, have a go at a full length." We like this guy. Why not give it a go? Yeah. And I think that's pretty much where that. The, the idea stopped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I found, I actually found it interesting that uh, with the short film, yeah. it uh, stars one particular actress. I can't remember the, the name of this woman, but she appears in the actual feature film mm. as the, the, the co worker of the, the guy who gets killed at the start. Oh, okay, at the intro, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Lorna or whatever her name and is. And she's apparently a favourite of his because she's been in a lot of other short films that he's done as well. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. Oh, there you go, there you go. Uh, her name is actually Lotta Lostin. Lotta. Yes. Mm. I thought it was Lorna, but that's okay. That's because I'm... No, and she plays the character Esther. Well, I, there's no Lorna there at all. No. I think it's probably, I probably no, saw Lotta, Lotta mm. and I was like, Lorna. Because, you know, no names. Anyway. <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> yeah, we're good on those. Mm. Uh, anyway, so this movie stars Teresa Palmer and uh, Gabriel Bateman. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, actual casting, I-, I wanted to ask you guys, did you think everyone was well casted in this movie or not? <sighs> Look, it's funny, like, you know, because you had, like, Maria Bello and that in it, who's, uh, like, one. Of, she's a fantastic actress that yep. I, really, I really quite like. Mm. Um, however, I really... I really think that when it came to the casting, they were working with what they had mm. and what they had was not much to go with in the way of acting. You know what I mean? Oh, no. See, I'm, I'm the average Joe Blow out of the three of us when it comes to horror movies. Like, I'm easily frightened yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> and spooked out. So this movie, it took me three attempts to actually sit through it. Yep. Mm. And uh, mind you, I was exhausted for two of them, but uh, it... All three really creeped the shit out of me, and I had to. It took me a while to realize, okay, this isn't so much a horror; it's just a really adrenalized thriller. Okay, see, mm, okay. it's funny that you said like creep, like creep factor. Yeah, there were a lot of a lot of creepy moments in this. Actually, in fact, one of my you know notes is, and I mean, I think I wrote this the in that first opening scene mm. was, if you're not afraid of the dark, you will be now. Because they really do capture that kind of, it's that aspect of, you know, it's the fear of well, fear of the dark. Yeah. yeah because, yeah. you know, the moment that, that light goes, flickers or that light goes out, you're like, holy shit, it's, you know, something freaky is going to happen. Yeah. But that's where it kind of then, that's what it, that's all it had. Yeah. See, that's what I was going to say. Like, I wouldn't have said that there was a lot of creepy moments. I think they blew their load on creepiness in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. And from then on, it was just a repeat of that same, you know, idea. It's like, oh, no, we're in a dark room. <gasps> the light's going out. Like, it was just the yeah. same thing over and over. So beyond that first scene, I wasn't creeped out much at all. See, for me, for me, I have to disagree. Like, okay, the I thought in terms of casting, I think everyone sort of suited their part, except for maybe the boyfriend, I yeah. think maybe the boyfriend just didn't quite fit. Mm. Uh, it's the relationships to sort of meh, not quite fitting in there. 
Yeah, anyway, but beside the point, like, I think everyone was kind of well suited. The mother played a really good role at being, like, crazy and sort of lost in, in her own sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of lost in... Her own insanity? Yeah. Uh, wouldn't, well, self-pity, I guess, is what it really yeah. is. But um, in terms of the creepiness and the scary moments, like, I found them where it started to wear off was after the moment where she gets picked up by the necklace. Oh, okay, yeah. From that point forward, that's when everything seemed to be repeated and yep. and it was more of a case of, okay, so what is the next moment that is going to bring them back into the dark area? Yeah, yeah. It's Did you actually get to a, a point of, like, I know we're kind of jumping around everywhere with this, but you know how when we first kind of get introduced to the monster... Yes. Right. So, you know, you get it's this whole, it's a supernatural somewhat being, you know, that stalks people through the dark, but can't appear in light or anything like that. And mind you, the whole conceit of that was given away in the first two minutes of the film as well. Yes. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But. No, but then we get like the real whole thing going for, and this is where I was going to kind of go with like the fact that, you know how, like you think it's an imaginary friend. It's her imagine. It's the mum's imaginary friend. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. See, like, did you get? Was it? I did you actually at one point think it may have been a manifestation of her insanity? Uh, like yeah. going back to like the Babadook sort of a situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, possibly for me, it was more of a once this, the the notion of uh, mum was crazy and she was in the asylum, especially when they found the the tapes and the the evidence, the files. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, it was more of a case of this person isn't actually dead; they just a weird coincidence they're in a sort of like a phase shift of reality like they're 180 degrees to us yeah mm. and only with the lights off can you actually see the person and so when the lights are on it's not that they can't affect us or anything they just they can still see us sort of a thing that that's what i got as a notion so i was half expecting with the black light when that was introduced towards the end that they were going to be able to kind of like a Freddy's nightmare sort of yeah, situation, yeah, yeah. Pull them and back pull into them, the real world, pull them back into the real world, mm, okay. and then deal with her that way. That's what I thought for a moment. I thought the direction it was going, mm. uh, it was actually kind of interesting with what they did with the black light. I thought that would have just killed us straight out because that's actual sunlight. That's no, UV light, exactly right. Mm. So, well, not actual sunlight, but simulated yeah. sunlight. So, yeah, I think that's where, like, once again, this is where they start bring they really start just bringing in all these different. Like, okay, so like we were saying before, this was built off a short film. Yeah. Right? So it was built off a short film, and the concept of it, what, of being, you know, that creepy or that, you know, afraid of the dark thing um, aspect, that's exactly what the short film is. Like, from what I've, I granted, I haven't seen it, I will say that, but I've read the synopsis of it. Yeah. And it is pretty much that opening two minutes of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, you know, that's where that concept really works. And cause it's like, okay, yeah, cool. I got my jolts and there you go. Mm. I then kind of went, fuck, they're really trying to shoehorn in at something else. Well, mm. part of it was what I was trying to remember as I started my last train of thought. And I just didn't quite get there was that with the opening scene in particular, you see the father get killed and they keep playing on the photos for a little while. So it makes, at first I thought, oh, maybe it's a dead sibling or something like that. Maybe it's a long lost sister of, of the mum mm. or someone they wronged when yeah, they yeah. were a little bit younger. Like and it's a just ghost following, it. yeah. Just following the family, basically. Yeah. And it, it was almost that. And I thought the actual story behind who she really is, I think was actually... A, a little bit more refreshing than than what you see normally. No, yeah. Yeah, look, it wasn't the... Uh, I mean, it was still pretty derivative. I've seen many horror movies with oh, yeah, very similar course. similar storylines. Oh, that, yeah. That's what I mean by it's My problem about it more so was the fact that they just revealed it all about halfway through the movie. You know, yeah. halfway through she finds uh, the, the box full of all the records that her yeah. father had been keeping and then from then on there's no mystery whatsoever. You know exactly what it is. You know exactly what's going to happen in the end. At that point as well, I don't know about you guys, but I picked that the mother would die. That yep. was the only way to get rid of the ghost yep. or whatever you want to call it. Because it's connected to the mother. Yeah, yeah. So from that point on there was like there was no more, there was no more thrills. There was no more suspense. It was just like we know how this is going to end. You know? Yeah, that's why I say it's it, it's not really horror. It's more of an adrenalized thriller. Yeah, yeah. And then they just ran out of steam at, at a certain point. Yeah, exactly. The and then you're just sort of like, oh, let's just get it over with. You know, we know yeah. what's going to happen. Maybe one of them will die. Maybe they won't. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's the mother's going to. Can I ask one thing? The boyfriend, when he supposedly 
gets super frightened and he and bolts, yeah, and, and leaves them behind. Oh and yeah. How fucking did anyone else just when he brings back the cops and the cops are completely ignoring everything that anyone is saying? Did anyone else get really angry? Uh, at the film at that point? Not at all, because that's exactly the way it happens in real life. Cops won't listen to civilians beyond what uh, the situation is going in. You know, you don't want a civilian coming into a house full of, uh, that could be, like, could house a potential killer. It made me angry. Oh, look, uh, see, the thing is, though, there was a lot of, like, the point where he went off to go get the police to the point he comes back, he's like, oh, this is going on, oh, no, to make sure the lights and all this other stuff. And I'm like, ah, yeah, like, whatever. Um... I didn't wouldn't say it made me angry because I think there were points before that that I kind of got angry at. Um, like what? Oh, actually, well, I've got one part here where, man, okay, it's me with kids in horror films. Yeah. Fuck, they annoy the shit out of me. I didn't think this kid was all that bad. Oh, no, but there's a point where he goes, uh, you know, like he's going back to his mum's place after he spends the night with his sister. Yeah. And he goes, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca's the sister's name. Yeah. Martin and Rebecca. Yeah, so Martin, he goes to Rebecca. It's okay. I got some sleep. I'm like, go fuck yourself, buddy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like fuck off. See, it's funny. There was moments where I thought that the kid overacted a little, but then on reflection, I was like, no, actually, that's probably more consistent with the way you would behave in that kind of a situation. Like when Sophie, his mom, tries to introduce him to Diana when they're on the couch yeah. uh, watching the movie after he comes back from yep. the sister's place. And yeah, yeah, she turns the light off and he just freaks the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, is, that's a bit over the top. And I was like, no, actually, no, that's pretty consistent with how somebody in the real world would act, you oh, know? Look, that's where I do go, well, he just, acted well. Not just that, yeah. especially the, the last time he was in the house, he happens to see the figure just come out from the side of the doorway, yeah, 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 not yeah. really quite seeing what it is. Mm. And he piss bolts in his room to then find that the door is like ba- practically being bashed against. Yeah. Like, what else would you do? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, true. It was a fucked up situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, so, no, look, that's, you know, that was just more a little annoyance thing. And then other little things, like I said, then it's like, oh, yeah, we reveal that she was in an insane asylum and that she was there with her too. Yeah. And she didn't want to leave her alone. Like, you know, Sophie alone, wanted to make sure she, no one lo- took a friend away. Yeah, yeah. It, the, that concept What I actually, what I actually like is, though, is that, we don't learn that it's something that the mum did wrong that the spirit is being vengeful and sticking around. Yeah. It's the person was just bad to begin with. That yeah. that I found a little bit refreshing. Well, it's not that she was bad. She was a victim of uh, abuse as well. I remember her father had locked her in a uh, basement well, for the first 13 years of her life. Well, that that's also something to argue with because the if you pay attention to what they had in – the files, yeah. it also says that the father was saying that she was in his head, which is why he was locking well, it yeah. down there. No, 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 no. It, it wasn't necessarily in that order, though. It was because, remember, he, he locked her in the, the the basement for 13 years. You'd think he would have gone insane before then. Right. I think it was just, you know, like she'd been abused for her entire life at some point. Maybe when she hit puberty, her supernatural powers came out. And yeah. then that's what drove the dad insane. But you're right, like inherently yeah. it was ultimately, yeah, she was she was the bad person, if you like, in the situation. It wasn't Sophie the mother's fault. It wasn't yeah. anything she'd done that, mm. that caused her to be evil. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. This, this movie is like one that, I don't know, I feel it's it, it's it's hard to pin. Like it's, it's not the greatest movie, but it's entertaining enough, I guess. But there are lots of little mechanics and tropes that, that we've seen, like you said, time and time again. But yeah. there's still little things that I find just twist or change just enough that I'm like, eh, okay, it's possible. Like, I, yeah. I'll, I'll let it go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I think it's because, like, it does have those moments. It has those moments of it does what a horror film should do. In other words, it does. It grabs you. It scares you. It makes you jump. It has that, like, that moment. It has a few of them. It has a few of them. Yeah. But it, as a plot line, for a plot, it's fucking I've, I've weak, I've got to also say the sound design in this movie, like I, I know a lot of movies play on sound design quite well, but mm. this movie played really well with voices and particular sounds such as like scratching at the, on the floor that the the, the, the the figure does in the dark, like that she'll sit there, Diana, her name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Diana will sit there and scratch words into the floor and you hear it like the character will be doing something specific and it just 
because I've got the sound surround right next to my ears. It just pops and it really freaked the shit out of me sometimes. Mm. Uh, certain things like banging on doors and stuff like that. Like it really, really plays a little bit to the atmosphere. Okay. So the director actually thought about stuff like that, which helped the immersion for me a little bit more than probably you guys. Okay. But yeah, um, yeah, that's fair. But I mean, that's one of the things, you know, that's integral to a, a decent horror course, movie, you know. Um, I suppose we would notice it more if, he, if he'd neglected to pay attention to the sound design. Yeah, I know. If it was particularly bad. I don't know. Said, Maybe oh, I'm just a weird. Shit. Yeah, but see, that also, that for me goes back to the like, parts where I thought it was creepy. Like that moment, actually, you're saying this, the scratching part. Yeah. Like that was fucking freaky. Which like, one? Which one? The when one she's where she's in, writing uh, her name on the. On uh, Rebecca's. Re- yeah. yeah. In Rebecca's apartment. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, yeah. she's doing that. Like that was freaky. Actually, the part with Rebecca's apartment with the flashing light as well. Oh, yeah. The buzz of the, of the light. Mm that was really well played up. So it was like you knew, yeah, like you waited for it. For me, like by that point, the gimmick was was already tired, you know, like that that whole lights off, lights on, light, lights off thing was throughout the intro, you know, and then it just seemed like they did exactly the same thing for the rest of the movie. It was, it was, they found like the way to present that and then just did it exactly the same throughout the rest the of the The other film. thing too is mm. the trailer gives a lot of that away. And, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And probably one of the most... Uh, creepy moments is that scene with the the street light going on and off yeah. Yeah. in Rebecca's apartment and we see it as the teaser of the movie anyway so we've already yeah, been exactly. exposed yeah. to it yeah okay so, cool yeah, I get, you get what you mean there whereas whereas if they probably use the opening 5 minutes for the the teaser then it probably would have had a better effect and when that came around, it would have been even more chilling to see in the first place. Yeah. Mm. There's also the, um, it's actually funny, it's the, like when you talk about the trailer, talking about the trailer, but also seeing the movie poster, like in the movie poster, that's, uh, you know, it's basically a light switch that's been um, got duct tape on it. So it uh, remains yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. And see, I would have loved it if they incorporated something like that in it, where there was this whole desperation of them in one room. Or just trying their best exactly. to make sure those late lights stay on, so yeah. the thing kind of like get a through. Five Nights at Freddy's moment. Yeah, exactly right. See, and that's what I mean. And they yeah. can't, you know, they, and there's if that one switch turns off, they're fucked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it feels like they could have done more with that, you know, yeah. with that mechanic. Well, the, the tension, moment, the moment to tension. have to have put that together probably then would have been when they it was a trap and they were locked in the basement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying to get the fuse box back working to to power all the lights back on again. Which I suppose there was a moment of that when they're standing in front of the the furnace. Yeah. But, you know, they didn't really build tension there either. It was just sort of like she's like, all right, I'm going to go see what's going on. You keep feeding the fire and then yeah, next thing you know it's out. It's yeah, like, it's like, yeah, kids. Yeah, because she pisses her on. off with a black light and she goes running upstairs yeah, yeah. and somehow throws something down the chimney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something I couldn't understand either. If she's adverse to light, surely getting within proximity of the source of the light would be beyond her too. Like, how do you put out a fire without seeing it? Uh, if you know what I mean? Up like, without the chimney, being though, contact. she would have had been able to get all the way so up. So she to... blew down the furnace? Yeah, no, uh, but, the chimney? No, but she'd be able to go up to the roof, it's really dark, and then throw something down. I suppose. But... I don't know. I'm but this, not a, it was like is, it was a space of like five seconds between when she got burnt and then the furnace went yeah, out. But she's like a spooky, spooky ghost. Yeah, so she I, can I do get that. it. <laughs> okay, like, well, it this, this actually brings a, a question that I had. Right, so every moment we have of seeing her, it's it's like a person, right? Mm-hmm. So the way if the light goes off and then comes back on within a few moments, she's just a little bit nearer, like as if it's a person, yeah, walking or running. And then when it comes to that sort of basement scene, suddenly she's on a different floor and she's like capable of moving. Like, for, for example, that furnace, Yeah. does that feed into the... Res- I, I have no idea how furnaces really work. So yeah, I thought they is, heated is up that, the house. But that, that's not running like a, a, to another fireplace, is it, with another fireplace opening? So the only, the only place that vent is going to is the roof. So how does yeah. she get from the floor just above them to suddenly the roof to throw something in there? Well, see, there was a couple of scenes in the climax too where I can't remember whether it was Rebecca or the boyfriend um, had a light. And so they'd flash it in one side of the room and she was on one side and then they'd turn around and she was instantly behind them. Yeah. It was like she, yeah, she uh, gained the ability to teleport further on. Yeah, it, it was kind of like the, the rules got twisted towards the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Which for me is just sign of lazy uh, script writing. Right. 
Because, you know, if you're going to establish stuff like that in a horror movie, like like rules like that, you know, like she can't be in the light, uh, she moves, but beyond that she is effectively like a, a normal human. You've got to stick with that throughout the movie. Otherwise you're just going for cheap thrills, you know, um, at the expense of anything logical Unless they specifically say consistent. in exposition she's getting stronger. Yeah, exactly, or something like that. Yeah. Actually, and that's a really good point because then – yeah, exactly, because if she could all of a sudden just teleport to that area, yeah. that whole point where the lights are flicking on and off and she's just getting slowly closer, well, that's pointless because the moment it was off, she'd be like, and I'm killing you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. Th- th- this is the thing, right? So with the biggest example of how she operates is probably, A, the opening, when you see the, the lights in the, the warehouse sort of move on and off and she's one step closer, like one yeah. set of lights closer, or yeah. even better yet, the example we keep using, which is Rebecca's apartment mm-hmm. and the, 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 the neon sign yeah, flashing the on and off, you see when she's noticed her that they've seen each other. That's right, yeah. And she's, she races to the switch, the light switch on the wall. Yeah. I don't want to say that, you know, that the director or anybody behind the movie was necessarily lazy. Maybe they're just, being that this was his first, you know, feature. Uh, first feature film, maybe he just didn't know where to go with it or, you know, how quite to build the tension um cuz that was evident as well in this whole in the whole idea that you know the entire conceit of her existence of Diana's existence was was revealed in that one montage where she's looking through the the paperwork you know yeah. Yeah. just sort of like yeah it there was there was nothing really to keep you drawn in from that point on so i reckon it would have been better if she found 90% of the information exactly yeah in the files but the the last remaining 10% is the the twist reveal, which could have been delivered by the mother. Yeah, that's what it is. It should have been in that last scene when she's got the gun to her head. She should have revealed, yeah, the big conceit, the big thing that revealed the nature of the the yeah. ghost. You yeah. know, whatever. That's what I expected. I expected her to come out with something. Well, no, I didn't. By the time the movie had got to that point, I was like, well, there's nothing else to reveal. But I I would have expected that would be the point. Yeah, where you do you yeah you 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 know you bring it full circle. Yeah, of course. And you explain. Yeah, I, I guess like the, the most uh, pedestrian example would be an M. Night Shyamalan Shyamalan <laughs> movie. Shyamalan and Ding Dong. M. Night you know, Shyamalan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, he does it very formulaically, but it is. It's like the last scene or, you know, the last conversation reveals, yes. you know. the Quite literally the, big... the last five minutes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. And look, it's the, that's where I go once again. I mean, I know I've repeated myself a lot on this is where – it's you know it was a good concept but i think yes, that's all yeah. it was and i feel like actually you know what i really feel like that when they optioned this you know they would have seen it they would have seen the concept and gone this is great we're going to get this guy we're going to do this we're going to make this movie yeah. and you know you know this is new line cinema as well so you know you got some big bigger backers than just like your bloom house or anyone like that yeah, yeah. but they've gone yep we're going to make this movie we're going to do this okay now we're going to try and write it well, how are we going to make this last an hour and a half oh fuck Okay, we've got three minutes worth of scares. Yeah. We now need to draw this out and put a story around it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And see, yeah, I, think, I think they I think dropped the ball. It kind a of bit. falls mm. apart. Like, they introduce a story mechanic, which uh, a story line, which I think should have been played on a little bit more, which is Rebecca wants to become the, the guardian of her brother. Yeah. Because she believes mm. that the mum is just incapable anymore. Yeah. yeah. And that that is an avenue they could have really gone down like, uh, for example, uh, a, a twist in the story could have been that she's trying at first, like you see the bong on the table, whatever. The, the social worker should have said, well, if you want to do, if you want to take care of him, you need to do this, this and that mm-hmm. and prove that you are capable of looking after him. And it should have culminated in the end of her doing whatever it took to save a brother. Well, yeah, here's an example where that could become a compelling, st- compelling storyline. And also clean Say it's life only up. the kids and maybe the father that actually believe she's insane. So for the whole movie, it's the kids trying to convince everybody else that their mum's crazy. And, you know, so Rebecca's got this in her head. She has to tr- sort of, you know, she she has to take guardianship of her brother. But everybody else is like, no, your mum's, you know, her his, uh, what is it, maternal? Um, his mother. Yeah, yeah. They, they, the social worker uses a particular phrase in the movie, maternal um, 
No, it's probably yeah. just a misheard or yeah, a parent yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, maybe that's the conceit, you know. So it's not until the very end of the movie you realize, wait, the mother was actually insane. You know, you reveal tiny details of her relationship with Diana, not that they were ever in an insane asylum or whatever. Maybe they were just friends as kids or something. Yeah, and then something happened yeah. to yeah. Diana, and they've always been linked. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that would be the story arc, yeah. you know, come around at the end oh, my God, she was crazy, but at the same time it wasn't her fault. You know, Rebecca yeah. re- redeems herself and, you know, yeah, comes into the, the guardianship naturally. Yeah, yeah and that's it, that's it. It was all, like you were saying as well, there was just too much reveal, 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 reveal. Yeah. And then I feel like they were just shoehorning in extra, you know, it's like she was insane. Not only was she insane, her friend was insane too, but her friend was psychic and her friend also was allergic to sunlight yeah. to the point where she vaporized yes, and became yeah. a fucking shadow <laughs> ghost. Like, I you know what I mean? That was odd. Like, that, people would have made a bigger why, deal about that. That's partially why I thought that she was still alive, but stuck in an alternate sort of phase of reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that the black light was going to pull her back yeah. into reality. But then again, it's then revealed that no, she's a shadow ghost that lives in the shadows of the mind of the psycho person. And yeah, I think I actually yeah. made that a lot more complex but, than it actually was. But, <laughs> but the other thing is because the mother hasn't been uh, crazy for the last 20 odd years. She's been living in the basement, not being able to be seen, be heard. Yeah. yeah. So she's gone even crazier by fucking up the mannequins. So that was yeah. the reasoning, was it, for her riding in the basement? Because I was wondering about that. I was like, but she's a ghost. Why does she need to, like, make because, notes on the because wall? Because the mum's on a meds. Yeah, and because okay. she's on a meds, she has no reason to give her power. And because yeah. she's got no power, no one can see her. But she re- Yeah, she regresses back to yeah. the state she was in before yeah. it all Did happened, which was in a basement. Yeah, which okay. is, which is the only explanation why she wants to kill the kids because... Yeah, she yeah. wants to keep the mum to herself. Yeah. yeah. But so, does, do we ever get the how, how she got herself linked that way to the mum? Well, that, that's the whole notion of she gets in your head. Yeah, yeah. But that somebody was makes mention of the, the fact that uh, Sophie believed she was the mother, believed she was friends with Diana, but she wasn't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there was a sort of suggestion, yeah, that she'd anchored into her head. But again, no, it was never really fully ex- explained. See, once again, I thought that was... Yeah, Which is cool. odd, yeah, to not fully explain that Aspect. sort of point and then over-explain everything else about the situation. It just seemed to be... Well, maybe that'll off. be in the sequel. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I think we should wrap up on this one. What do you guys think? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go first. I think, I think this movie is okay. It's not, it's not overly special or anything like that. But it is a good movie to just burn some time with if you if you're there with some mates and you want to have have uh, interesting interesting discussion as it's playing, or, or if, if you want to have a cuddle with some of them when they get scared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in my case, if uh, you just don't want to be by yourself and you watch scary movies for yeah, yeah. no problem. Um, <laughs> I found the the opening scene uh, quite creepy and spooky, yes. And uh, the the movie tends to peter off once the once Rebecca finally believes the brother that something is going on, mm. and after that it just becomes a standard thriller. Like how are we gonna how are we gonna run away? It becomes a nineties horror movie. Yeah, and um, at that point. It loses a lot of momentum. Like the movie is still going and, and so forth, but they're just, there's nothing enough to grab anyone mm. at that point. And it's just a matter of, okay, trying to guess how they're going to kill her at that stage. And, yeah, as we've discussed, the, the story just kind of falters apart and doesn't have – like they, they introduce, introduce a couple of interesting things, but they don't resolve any of it. Mm. And uh, it brings the question of why was it there in the first place? Mm. It largely runs out of momentum, doesn't it, yes. by the end? Yeah, it, it really runs out of steam. Mm. Uh, so for me, I'm going to give this two bananas. Mm. Look, I um, – yeah, I, I look – I thought at first, you know, like concept wise, it's actually pretty cool. I really like it. I did get creeped out at certain moments. I got it. I got the jump. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, look, if I think if you're into uh, horror films like, you know, paranormal activity kind of thing where it's like the cheap jumps kind of th- and whatnot. Yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll yeah. enjoy this film, and I mean, look, they—I mean, like I said, it's gonna—they are making a sequel. It's already been greenlit. The movie, which was, I still don't understand how it's gonna work, because and, and how's yeah, how's it gonna work? But I mean, this movie made money. Like it yeah. was made for five million dollars, box office one hundred and fifty mil. Yeah. So, it, you know, if they make the next one for double that, and it makes one hundred and fifty mil again, well, they're making money for yeah, doing. Even nothing. if it only makes fifty mil. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah, they're still making money. So. Yeah. 
it's you know it's going to make money. But I think out of there's a lot better horror films out there. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, two bananas. Two bananas. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm going to largely agree with everything you, you guys have said. Uh, I'm going to lead with my rating. I'm going to say two bananas as well. Um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily recommend anybody go see this. Like I wouldn't even recommend that you know. If it's on Netflix or something, watch it. There is other stuff I would say watch instead of this. There's a lot of very good horror films on Netflix. Yeah, Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, same sort of criticisms. It was a neat sort of concept. The idea was there, but they didn't do enough with it. And the stakes after the big reveal halfway through the movie just sort of fell through the floor. You know, it was like we knew how it was going to end. It was just a matter of how they were going to get there. Mm. They didn't do anything more interesting, uh, anything more interesting with the concept either. I came by just sort of one idea while you were talking, Heath, like they didn't do much with daytime. No. So like, say one of them uh, gets trapped in a basement or something and they need to get out to the sunlight to be able to get away from it. So there's, yeah. there's a tension, you know, scene right there because you know it's daylight outside. And like they just have can't kids get there. playing, yeah, have kids playing on the street and stuff as a juxtaposition to yeah, the horror, yeah. you know, she's suffering, trying to crawl, crawl through like a basement window or something, you know? Yeah. It just seems like, yeah, there's a lot more they could have done and it could have been paced a lot better. But, uh, yeah. So Actually, I'm, I'm envisioning the actual, um, the tension of the, sort of smeared, dirty basement window. Exactly, yeah, And yeah. you can still see through it, but not enough sunlight's coming through to really yeah, affect yeah. anything. There you go, yeah. So say she where she rubs some of the dirt off one section, so she's got one patch of floor where she's safe. Yeah. And then she's got to work out how to get to the door and out from there or something. You that, know, there's just yeah. so many... That actually is a really good scenario. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That could have made it really, yeah, really neat. But, yeah, so I just feel like they didn't do enough with it. Um, and, yeah, it, it fell flat. Once we knew what was going on, so yeah, it's unfortunate. Honest, like, yeah. it it's good enough to just put on and pass the time, but it really mm. isn't much more than that. No, and on no, yeah. on paper, the idea is really good, but yeah, yeah, it's not much more than that. The execution is where it fails. Alrighty, mm. well, that's it for uh, Banana Reel this week and uh, all this fortnight. But of course, you can reach us at the various social medias. Uh, easiest way to do that is just to go go to our website or go to Twitter and Facebook and search for Theatre Gorillas, spelled the UK English way. And YouTube as well. And YouTube, of course. Um, uh, just want to apologise for Jungle Play last week. We tried our best, but we had some technical difficulties and it didn't come. <laughs> And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we didn't actually end up dropping an episode. So hopefully next week we've, we're back on track. Yeah, we'll definitely have one next week and we might even have one before then. There's a couple of betas I'm sort of waiting on at the moment, yeah. so it depends how they'll, they'll pan out. All but, right. yeah, there'll definitely be one next Wednesday cool. at the least. Yeah. yeah. So as usual, just stay tuned for the end of the theme song to find out what this week's movie, Who Am I, is. And uh, we'll see you in a fortnight. Okay, ciao. See ya. See ya. All right, so you stayed to find out what this week's movie, Who Am I, is. And the answer is... Ace Ventura and Nature Calls. Yeah. Mm. Jesus, this is a quotable movie. Yeah. I like. I just keep on thinking, you know, uh, uh, when he talks about... He's like, and my animal friends, lend me your rears. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh, love it. Oh, and the Ooh. like a glove. Yeah. Oh, and the other day I saw a kid playing with his slinky and all I got was the scene in my head where he's going down this big stairs from the te- the temple. Yeah. He's singing oh, the yeah. song, Everybody Loves a Slinky. <laughs> go, Slinky, yeah. go. And it stops yeah. at the last one. It was right there. <laughs> Can we do it again? <laughs> <laughs> so When Nature Calls was 95, the yep. year before was uh, Pet Detective. Yes. Yep. Uh, which one did you actually think was better, the first or the second? Um, I like them both. I like really both. like them both. I think... Um, I think this one. What I, I think this one's got a lot more memorable, quotey moments in it. Like was there's it, a lot I of think gags. The first one is more memorable. Was it the second one where he crawled out of the um, fake yes. rhinos? Yes, the fake yes. rhino. Anus. Look, the rhino's giving birth, and he's yeah. like, <laughs> and then he just falls out and he's naked. Yes, that's a classic piece of physical comedy. Oh, right it is. There. It's great. Yeah. But there's that. And you've got the, oh, yeah, you got that scene. The, the, and look, wasn't the Monopoly guy the, the second Monopoly one? guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you must you, be the, the Monopoly, Monopoly hey, guy. Hey, thanks for the free parking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. all right, guys. Catch you in a fortnight. Bye. Catch you. Peace. 
This podcast is recorded and produced by Theatre Gorillas, edited by Dan Clark.